So les adjectifs, and we'll focus a little bit more on le genre. So the gender, when you change the gender of the adjective. So the whole concept is to see how the adjectives will change when you get, well, the masculine form and then you want to put the feminine form. Okay, so the main rule is that if you want to put, well, the feminine form, you should just add a, so la voyelle a, at the end of your adjective. Okay, but it's as usual in French, it's a rule and we've got many, many, many exceptions. Okay, but then this is the main uh, concept, this is the idea. Uh, you put a uh, at the end and it should be uh, the feminine form. Okay, so we'll see in this video, of course, uh, some exceptions. And actually, it's quite interesting because in even if the in the subgroups we've got some exceptions. Okay, so but then don't worry. Try your best, and we'll, you you'll see it will go fine. And uh, well, first example. So if we focus on the, the the regular ones, okay. So like français, for instance. So il est français, okay. And if we follow the main rule, elle est française. Okay, so français here, you get this final S that you don't pronounce, so français. And then when you put this final E here, you will get française. Okay, so français, masculin, française. And then another example, joli. And you get, il est joli, elle est jolie. Okay, so you get the masculine form, joli like that and then you just respect the rule uh, that tells you that you should put this final e at the end okay and then you get joli okay so you can see that you put this e, but then you don't pronounce it okay so it's joli so basically the two adjectives masculine joli and feminine joli are pronounced the same way and then we get grand okay so example Il est grand, elle est grande. Okay, so we've got a little bit the same situation here as we had previously with français and française because we don't pronounce the final s in français and it's exactly the same thing. This final d is not pronounced. Okay, so grand and then the feminine form grande. Okay, so you put this e uh, and then you get the sound d, d, grande. Okay, il est grand. Elle est grande. And then we get petit. Il est petit. Elle est petite. Okay, exactly the same idea. Final T is not pronounced. And then when you add this E at the end, you get the sound T, T, petite. Okay, il est petit. Elle est petite. All right, so let's see now the meaning of the adjective, so français, and then we get joli, and then we get grand, and finally petit. Okay, so of course we've got some exceptions, as I said. So if your adjective at the masculine form is ending with s, okay, as we saw, uh, normally you should have this E at the end, so gris, grise, okay, mauvais, mauvaise. But then keep in mind that in some cases, like for gros, you will have to double the S, okay, so you will get gros and then gros, okay, same thing for bas, bas, okay, so as I said, we've got some exceptions, okay, so gros will become gros and then ba will become bas. The meanings are so gris and then mauvais gros ba. Let's see now when your adjective is ending with So the idea is that, as you can see, 
if you've got already at the end a well basically you cannot add another one okay because anyway you wouldn't pronounce it so you just keep it like in the masculine form okay so you get jeune for the masculine and you get jeune for the feminine so exactly the same form okay admirable and then for the feminine you will get admirable the same form drôle and the feminine drôle formidable formidable okay so it's quite simple if you get this final e uh, okay then you don't add anything you don't modify it you just keep it like at the masculine form okay so let's see now the meaning so jeune admirable drôle formidable if your adjective at the masculine masculine sorry is ending with a accent aigu like here so a so in that case you will just add this final a uh, okay but then the thing is that you don't pronounce it so phonetically you will get exactly the same form so masculine form animé and then a feminine form animé okay you don't pronounce this e uh, but then you should write it cassé cassé adopté adopté invité invité okay so quite simple you just need to add this e uh, at the end but then you don't pronounce it okay so let's see now the meanings animé cassé adopté invité and now if your adjective is ending with a air you should keep in mind that you will have to modify it a little bit more than previously so you actually put this accent grave here and then you just add this e uh, at the end okay and then the sound will change quite much because if you think about the masculine form you pronounce it premier okay premier and then for the feminine form you will get première okay so it's open this a e sound première premier première and then second example dernier okay and you will get dernière all right so keep in mind that you should put this accent grave and then you pronounce it like a e, okay and then you add this e uh, at the end premier dernier so a uh, r again i thought it might be interesting to see two other adjectives so léger so exactly the same category remember you put this accent grave and then you add a uh, at the end légère étranger and you will get étrangère okay for the meaning léger and then étranger so if you get adjectives ending with e e r or then e e t you will get the same rule as we had previously so you will have to put this accent grave and then just add this e uh, at the end and so journalier will become journalière or then inquiet will become inquiète okay so in that case it's already open the sound inquiet okay so you only hear the t inquiète 
Okay, so journalier will become journalière, and then inquiet will become inquiète. Okay, so for the meanings, journalier, and then inquiet. So let's see now if your adjective at the masculine form is ending with F. So we'll take this first example, neuf. So basically this F will need to disappear, disappear sorry, <laughs> and you will uh, put V and then E instead. Okay, so you will get neuf, that will become neuve. Okay, neuf and then neuve. Okay, and then as well, sportif will become sportive. Okay, so F is going away and then you put V uh, instead. Okay, so for the meaning, neuf, sportif. So what if your adjective is ending with G? It's quite rare, but it does happen. So let's discover two examples. And the first one is aigu. Okay. And then the feminine form will be aigu. So phonetically, it is exactly the same thing. Okay. But then you should put this tremor here on the top of your U. And then remember to put this a uh, at the end. Okay. But then you don't pronounce anything because it is exactly the same. So Aigu will become aigu. Another example is ambigu, and it will become ambigu. Okay, so you don't modify the way to pronounce them. You only need to put this tréma on the top of u and then e uh, at the end. And the meaning is aigu, ambigu. If your adjective is ending with L, okay, but not a L, okay, so L. Null will become null. So phonetically it's the same, but then you double the L and you put a at the end. Okay, so null and then null. Phonetically it is the same thing. Same thing here. Artificiel will become artificiel, you pronounce it the same way, but then you double the L and then you put a at the end. Okay? And the meaning nul artificiel. So what if your adjective is ending with a L? Okay, so let's see now. It will be quite simple because in that case it does mean that it will follow the main rule that we had uh, at the beginning of the video. So you just need to add this a uh, at the end. Okay. But then phonetically it's quite interesting because you don't uh, make any difference. You will get so général at the masculine form and it will be exactly the same thing at the feminine form. Général. Okay. So général masculin, général féminin. And then fatal, feminine form, you just add this final e, uh, but then phonetically it's the same, fatal, okay? So, général, and then fatal. If your adjective is ending with n, okay? So let's see now. In that case, so I took this quite useful adjective, bon, you will have to double the N, like you see here, and then you put this E uh, at the end. Okay, so bon will become bon. Okay, so the sound is changing quite much because here you've got this nasal, bon, okay, and then bon, okay, bon, bon. And then another example, mignon will become mignon. Okay, same thing here, nasal, mignon, and then when you put the feminine form, mignon. 
Okay, so let's see the meaning. So, bon, and then mignon. If your adjective is ending with t, in that case, we will see that you will have to double the t, like we have in this example, coquet will become coquette. Okay? But think about that, this is the rule, but <laughs> it's quite interesting because we've got so many exceptions that in some I mean somehow the exceptions are uh, you can find more exceptions than the the one that will follow the rules so I know it's strange but then so keep um, keep in mind that um, the main idea is to get the sound et okay so whether you will get it like that so by putting two t and then e at the end or then like we do here so we put this accent grave here and then te. So phonetically it's the same. Okay, so it's et and then et. Okay, so that's the reason why you will have in some cases double t here and then in other cases you will have this accent grave te. Okay, so discret will become discrète. Okay, and then let's see. Complet will become complete and then inquiet will become inquiète okay so remember the same idea the idea is to get this sound et okay so whether you put it like that okay coquette or then you put it like that with the accent discrète complète inquiète okay and the meanings are Coquet, discret, complet, inquiet. What if your adjective at the masculine form is ending with C? Well, let's see this example. Public. So you can see that you get this final C and then you pronounce it, huh? public, okay? So you will have to change it, so you take it away and then you put this Q-U-E instead. And well, phonetically, it is exactly the same thing. So public, at the masculine form, feminine form, public, the same, okay? Public, public. Second example, laïque, laïque. So you need to modify it, yes, you need to take away the C and then put Q, U, E, but then phonetically, if you pronounce it, you, you pronounce it exactly the same way. Okay, so let's see now the meaning. Public. Laïc. What if your adjective is ending with a -U -R. So let's see now. Joueur. So it will become joueuse. Okay. So you take away this a -U -R and then you change away. You change it and you put a -U -S -E. Okay. So joueur is becoming joueuse. And in the same way, travailleur is becoming travailleuse. Okay. So a -U -R is going away and then you put a -U -S -E. Joueur, joueuse, travailleur, travailleuse. And the meaning, joueur, travailleur. Oops, <laughs> I made a mistake. Um, okay, so I'll put the full thing, so now it will be more clear. So if your adjective is ending with T-E-U-R, okay, ter. So in that case, we've got two different possibilities. And the first one is here. Chanteur will become chanteuse. Okay, so we'll basically follow the rule that we had previously. So you just take away the E, U, R, and you put a U, S, E, so teuse. And it's just because, um, well, 
as you can see, I, I wanted to put the verb, so it was not a surprise. Um, the verb is chanter, okay, and it's with t e r. And as the verb is with t e r, so basically you can change it like that and follow the rule that we had uh, previously, okay. But then in some cases you get directeur, for instance, and directeur. Well, the verb is not directé doesn't exist so it's dirigé okay and in that case it means that it's not ending with t -E -R, so the feminine form will not be as we had previously here okay so it will be something different and it will be trice okay so directeur will become directrice okay so if your verb is ending with t -E -R, like for Chanter, so chanteur will become chanteuse, but then if it's not ending with t -E -R, like here, dirigé, so it will become trice, directeur, directrice. Okay? Now it's coming at the right time. So, this is the translation. Chanteur, and then directeur. So what if your adjective at the masculine is ending with G? And it's actually quite interesting because I've been trying to find uh, more adjective, but it was didn't really have the time anyway. But then this one is quite useful. So uh, keep in mind that long, in that case, you will have to add this U and then E. Uh, okay, so long remember you don't pronounce the final G, will become long. Okay, so phonetically it's long. G -g -g -g. Long. So long, masculin, long, féminin. And this is the meaning. Les adjectifs, et plus précisément, l'adjectif épithète. Okay, so let's see now what it means because this is the first question what is l'adjective epithet well you will see that it's quite simple because it is an adjective so an adjective associé à un nom okay so you will associate this uh, adjective to a noun all right so we've got the example here une femme célèbre okay so if you take the time to look you've got une femme a woman and after that you get this Célèbre, okay, so it's an adjective, and you can see that it's directly connected to une femme. So this is what we call an adjective epithet, okay, and the translation is here. So let's see a few examples now. Un animal domestique. So same thing here, you've got domestic right after your noun. Un grand appartement. So it's quite interesting because you've got here grand, so the adjective before the noun. And then the last example, un nouveau livre. Same thing here, you get nouveau before your noun. Okay, and for the translations. So, it's actually quite interesting because we've been noticing that when we talk about l'adjectif epithet, we will have two situations. The first one will be anteposé, so it means that this adjective will come before the noun, okay, avant le nom. Or then, the second option, it's uh, actually when the, the adjective is coming after the noun, so it's postposé, so après le nom, okay, so whether Anteposé or then postposé. Before the noun, after the noun. Okay, so let's see now few examples when it's anteposé. And the first one, un bon ami. Okay, so we can see that here you've got this adjective, bon. Okay, and then you pronounce it bon ami when you make this link. Second example, une belle femme. So same thing here, you get this adjective, belle, okay, the feminine form, because you get une femme, but then it's coming before femme. And for the translations, uh, 
And then we saw that it could come also after, so it will be postposé. Okay, and in that case, we've got a simple example here. Un travail difficile. Okay, so you get difficile, and difficile is coming after travail. Okay, but it's directly coming, so you get nothing between the two. And then une expérience enrichissante. Same thing here. The adjective is coming right after the noun. And of course, you've got the feminine form here because une expérience is feminine. And for the translations, l'adjectif attribut. Okay, so we saw in the previous video l'adjectif epithet, and then we'll continue uh, with l'adjectif attribut in this video. Okay, so the question is what is l'adjectif attribut? Uh, well, l'adjectif attribut, well, clearly it's an adjective, of course, and it will appear or it will be in or dans un groupe verbal. So it means that you will need to have at least one verb that will somehow introduce this adjective. Okay? So in most of the cases, uh, you will see uh, this adjective introduced by être, to be, Okay, but then it could be other verbs as well, but then keep in mind that être is quite often used. Okay, so let's see now a few examples. The first one, le canapé est confortable. So you can see that in this structure, you get here the subject, le canapé, then you get the verb est, and then you get this adjective. So adjective, this adjective is introduced by être, so, a here. So, it does mean that it's an adjective attribut. Okay? Le canapé est confortable. La vue est magnifique. La vue est magnifique. So, exactly the same situation here. You've got la vue, then you've got the verb être, and after that you've got your adjective here. Les enfants sont calmes. Okay, same thing here. You've got les enfants, then you've got the verb être, and the adjective is coming after. So you can see, uh, you cannot see here uh, the feminine form because it's actually the same form as the masculine, but keep in mind that you should put the feminine because it's an adjective, and then if this adjective uh, will change, changes when you put the feminine, then you should definitely put the feminine form here when you've got the feminine. Here you get the plural form, so basically you just put this S at the end. Okay? So for the translations, here they come. Let's take a few examples again. So, le directeur est autoritaire. La voiture est bleue. Okay, so in that case it's quite interesting because you can see that normally we've got the, well, the adjective bleu. So it's B-L-E-U for the masculine form or the basic form if you want. And then in that case we've got la voiture, so it's feminine. So you should put this uh, at the end. Okay, phonetically it doesn't exist because you don't pronounce it. So you get bleu as you would get uh, for the masculine form, okay, but still you need to write it here because it's the feminine form. La voiture est bleue. And then, les légumes sont délicieux, okay, les légumes sont délicieux. So, in all these cases, autoritaire, bleu, and then délicieux, well, these adjectives, les adjectifs, are what we can call adjectifs attributs. Let's see the translations now. Il devient nerveux. So in that case, it's quite interesting because you can see that I didn't put être, but then I did put this devenir, to become. Okay? Il devient nerveux. Nerveux. Elle reste calme. Elle reste calme. Ça semble difficile. Ça semble difficile. 
Okay, so in these cases, even if we don't have être, so as I said in the introduction, so we've got other verbs, devenir, to become, rester, to stay, and then sembler, to seem. Okay, so in these cases also, you will introduce some adjectives after, and these adjectives will be what we call adjective attribut. Okay, so let's see now the translations. something that you should remember so attribut so this adjective attribut uh, can be attribut du sujet like we have been saying so far so ce film est bon okay so in that case you get the subject ce film and then you get the verb and after that you've got this adjective Okay, but keep in mind that it's also possible to have this attribute as attribute de l'objet. Okay, so it does mean that, well, still you've got a sentence, you've got a verb, okay, but then the adjective will not be related or connected to the subject, okay, but it will be connected to this object. So when we call the object, it's a, the grammatical object. Okay, so je trouve ce film bon. Well, in that case, also, this bon will be adjective attribute. Translation, so, ce film est bon. And then, je trouve ce film bon. L'adjectif apposé ou détaché. Okay, so we continue the series of, uh, well, that cover les adjectifs. So, let's start now. So, l'adjectif apposé Ou détaché. It's actually quite simple because uh, these adjectives will be connected to what we call un groupe nominal. So clearly when we talk about un groupe nominal, we're not only referring um, to one noun, okay, but it's a noun with something. So it could be an adjective, for instance, and that's what will happen in the examples uh, I will show in this video, okay? And the concept is that uh, you want to actually make a distinction. So you will make, first you will have your noun and then what comes with it, so adjective. And if you want to introduce after that this adjective apposé or then détaché, uh, then you will, so when you speak, you will make une pause, so break, or then you will make une intonation, so you will change your voice, okay, to make it clear that it's something different, something that you will add to what you've been introducing previously, okay. When you write, in a way it's more simple because you only need to put une virgule, a comma, okay, so keep in mind that when you when you speak, then you will have to make a little break, so in petite pause, or then you will change uh, your voice, okay? And then if you speak, then you will put une virgule, okay? So in that case, well, we will see how it will be when you write. So ce jeune homme, and then here you get your comma, and then you get this habillé en rouge, after that, the comma is coming and the sentence continues, okay? So that's the concept. You first have your first part here, ce jeune homme, this young man, okay? And then you put this comma and after that, you put this part that we'll call adjective apposé. Then the comma and the sentence continues, okay? So we are talking about that and nothing else, okay? Let's see another example here. So, cette vieille femme, so same thing here, cette vieille femme, this old lady, cette vieille femme, and then you want to add something more, so agréable et souriante, you put your comma, and the sentence continues. Okay, so this is what we are talking about in this video. It's quite simple. Okay, nothing really uh, <laughs> special, but still, you know, I, I thought it might be interesting to make a little video on that because in some cases people maybe tend to forget that you get to make a little, you know, something between the first part and the rest of the sentence.
Okay, so let's see now the translation. Okay, so remember that when we talk about adjective apposé ou détaché, so we will talk about what we've been seeing so far. And remember, if you speak, then you will have to make a little break or then you will have to change your voice, okay, to make it clear that it's something you want to add. And then if you want to write, then as we saw, you will have to put this comma before and after, and then your sentence can continue, okay? L'adjectif relationnel. Okay, so we continue this long series uh, covering les adjectifs, but I think it's quite useful and it's maybe better to make some little videos like that covering only one type of adjectif. Okay, so in this video it will be l'adjectif relationnel. Okay, so let's start now. So l'adjectif relationnel, I thought it might be useful to just start with examples okay so you've got the first one here you've got a sentence un déplacement du président okay so it will be i mean it's possible to use that un déplacement du président but what if you would like to replace du président and put an adjective instead and that's exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about l'adjectif relationnel. Okay, so un déplacement du président, you don't want to use du président, well, you just put the adjective présidentiel. So you get un déplacement présidentiel. All right. Another example would be un député de la République. And in that case, it's exactly the same. It's possible to use that, un député de la République, but then if you want to use, instead of de la République, an adjective, so un adjectif relationnel, it is possible you will get un député and then un républicain, so the adjective. Okay? So in these cases, it's actually quite clear and not that difficult because you just replace du président with Présidentiel, or then de la République with républicain. Okay, so we'll see another. Oh, sorry, uh, the translation first. Okay, so we'll see now two other situations where you can replace uh, well parts. In that case, un ordinateur qu'on peut porter. Okay, so you've got here this relative, so qu'on peut porter. And in that case, you just want to, well, replace this qu'on peut porter with an adjective. And it's actually quite simple because in that case, qu'on peut porter, well, you take porter and then you transform it and you put the adjective so it will be portable. Un ordinateur portable. Okay, so basically, un ordinateur qu'on peut porter, a computer that one can carry okay but then of course it's a bit heavy and in that case you would like to have something well lighter than qu'on peut porter well it just put the adjective portable un ordinateur portable okay so we'll see another example un écran qu'on peut toucher and in that case, it's exactly the same. We don't want to use qu'on peut toucher because it's quite heavy and the sentence is not that light <laughs> as we would like it to be. So we will put tactile, so the, adject the adjective that will replace this qu'on peut porter. So un écran tactile. Okay, so let's see the translations now. Okay, so keep in mind that as we had previously all then here, you've got some parts uh, that are uh, possible to keep if you want. Okay, so un ordinateur qu'on peut porter, it's totally correct. Un écran qu'on peut toucher, it's correct also. But then you want to have it, uh, to put it uh, in such a way that it will be only one adjective instead of all these words, then portable, un ordinateur portable and un écran tactile. Okay, so keep in mind that when we're talking about l'adjectif relationnel, well it must be of course related en relation avec le nom, 
And then as we saw in the first part, it can be complément de nom or in the second part, it can be une relative. Les adjectifs. And in this video, we'll focus on les adjectifs or l'adjectif, épithète antéposé. Okay, so we've been seeing already uh, something covering l'adjectif épithète. Okay, because if you remember correctly, when we're talking about l'adjectif épithète, we are talking about an adjectif associé à un nom. So, an adjective that is associated to a noun, okay, like in this example, une femme célèbre. So, you have your adjective here. Okay, directly connected to the noun, you don't have any verb between the between them. Okay, so and in it in this case, we are talking about adjective epithet. Okay, so the second thing is that we're talking now about adjective epithet antéposé, and then antéposé well means that this adjective will be placed before the noun. Okay, so like in this example, un jeune homme. Un jeune homme. So in that case, you've got your jeune, young, okay, adjective here. And as you can see, it's before your noun. Un jeune homme. And in that case, jeune, we will talk here about adjective, épithète, antéposé. So let's see. First, sorry, the translations. Une femme célèbre. And then, un jeune homme. So you should remember that when we're talking about this category of adjectives, well, we will talk about adjectives that are so courant, you use them quite often, and they are really, really short adjectives. So n not, long, not, not long adjectives, but really short ones, okay? And then, uh, caractérisé par des adverbes. So if you introduce these adjectives with adverbs so before you will if you want to put si trop très or then to so in that case remember that you will have to put them before the noun and the last category is actually quite useful because we're talking about adjective numéro okay so when we talk about the numbers in that case well you will you will have to put them before the noun as well Okay, so let's see now a few examples and the first category. So we were talking about really common adjectives that are really, really short. Okay, so the first one, un jeune homme, so as we had previously. Second one, une belle ville. Then, un bon déjeuner. Un mauvais film. Okay, so you can see that in all these cases, jeune belle, bon, and then mauvais, they are placed before the noun. Homme, ville, déjeuner, and then film. Okay, so let's see the translations now. Un jeune homme, une belle ville, un bon déjeuner, un mauvais film. Okay, so second category, remember, when you introduce them with adverbs like si, trop, très, or then to. Un tout petit bébé. Okay, so here we've got tout, so it's an adverb, and then we've got petit, so the adjective. And so just because we combine the two, then we will have to put them before the word or the noun, so bébé. Un tout petit bébé. Remember that when we're talking about this category, it's always possible when we speak to put that after as well. Un bébé tout petit. Une très belle maison. Same thing here. You get the adverb très and then the adjective belle. Okay, so you should put them before the noun maison. But as we saw previously, when we talk, it's always possible to change that and to put that after. Une maison très belle. Okay? So keep in mind that in blue here, un tout petit bébé, 
une très belle maison. Well, that's what normally you should do and what normally you should write. So they should come before the noun, like here and here. Okay. But when you talk, well, as you know, oral French is a bit more flexible, so it's not that strict. So it is possible to put them after the noun. Un bébé tout petit, une maison très belle. For the translations. And the third category was les adjectifs numéro. Okay, so let's see now. Le premier baiser, and then la première invitation, so keep in mind that as you will put them before, you will have to, because there are adjectives, to change them according to the gender, so in that case it's masculine, so you don't modify it, you just put premier, <coughs> sorry, and then here, <coughs> oh my god, here you've got, uh, well, the feminine form, so it's la, Okay, and then you will have to put the feminine form of premier, and it's première. Okay, so la première invitation. Okay, so let's see now. La troisième porte, and then le dernier restaurant. Okay, so keep in mind that because we are talking about, well, numbers, so premier, première, or then troisième, and then dernier, in that case, they should come before the noun. Okay, so let's see now the translations. L'adjectif épithète postposé. Okay, so let's start now. So when we talk about l'adjectif épithète postposé, first well, you should know what an adjective epithet is, and it's actually not that difficult. L'adjective epithet is an adjective that will be associated to a noun. Okay, so let's take this example here. Un homme joyeux. Okay, so you've got a man and then joyeux, joyful. So this adjective is coming right after your noun. Okay, you don't have any verb, you don't have anything between the two and them, so it's what we call an adjective epithet. Okay, and the second thing that we should, well, clarify, it's postposé. And when we talk about postposé, so we will talk about an adjective that will be placed after the noun. Okay, so like in this example here, une chemise bleue. Okay, so bleu here is coming after your noun. Okay, so it's what we call postposé. Translations are here, un homme joyeux, and then une chemise bleue. Okay, so for these adjectives, epithet postposé, we will talk about les adjectifs that will express well, what we call in qualité objective. So if you want to talk about the color, for instance, the appearance, the shape, la forme, or then l'origine, the origin, or the nationality. So in these cases, well, these adjectives will respect uh, this rule. So they will come right after your noun, and they will come, well, clearly right after, so and not before. Okay, so the second category, uh, we are talking about les participes passés. So we've been seeing that previously, um, participes passés, so in English it's uh, past participles, and then les participes présents, present participles. So normally, les participes passés, remember, we use them when we construct these compound tenses. Okay, but then these particip participles, sorry, the past and the present, they can be used as well, not all of them, but some of them can be used as well as adjectives. And, well, in these cases, you will put them after your noun, okay? After that, we will talk about les adjectifs uh, that will be, um, or that will have before them an adverb, okay? But we're not talking about uh, trop, très, tout, and si because we've been seeing that in the previous video that uh, these four adverbs are actually a bit tricky.
okay but then all the other adverbs that will be placed before your adjectives will actually it will be quite simple but then you will put them after your noun okay after that we're talking about les adjectifs relationnels so we've been doing videos concerning that so it should be quite simple to handle and then les adjectifs that will be followed by a complement though qui sont suivis d'un complément okay so in all these cases here so adjectif qui exprime une qualité objective les participes passés et une participe et une partie des participes présents utilisés comme adjectif les adjectifs qui sont précédés d'un adverbe, les adjectifs relationnels, les adjectifs qui sont suivis d'un complément. So in all these cases, keep in mind that these adjectives will come after the noun and not before, okay? After. So let's take a few examples now. So the first category, we're talking about les adjectifs qui expriment une qualité objective, couleur, apparence, forme, origine ou nationalité. Un vélo rouge, une table ovale, un touriste australien. Un vélo rouge, une table ovale, un touriste australien. Okay, so you can see that in all these cases, they are coming after your noun. Second category, remember, we were talking about les participes passés, so past participles and then present participles, okay, but used as adjectives, so let's see now. Un homme organisé, une maison détruite, un clown chantant, une soirée fatigante. Un homme organisé. Une maison détruite, un clown chantant, une soirée fatigante. Then, remember, les adjectifs précédés d'un adverbe. So, in these cases, you can see that un voyage incroyablement cher. So, cher is the adjective here, okay, but then you've got this incroyablement so it's an adverb and it's coming before your adjective so you will have to put the two of them after your noun here un voyage and then the rest is coming incroyablement cher une réceptionniste extrêmement efficace des restaurants rarement bons Okay, so in all these cases, as you can see, we've got here, incroyablement, an adverb, extrêmement, another adverb, and then a rarement, an, ad an adverb as well. And they just go before your adjective. So, translation, un voyage incroyablement cher, une réceptionniste extrêmement efficace, des restaurants rarement bons. And then we were talking about les adjectifs relationnels. So I've been making a video regarding les adjectifs relationnels. So it should be, it shouldn't be that difficult. Une visite présidentielle. Des députés européens. And then un ordinateur portable. Okay, so in all these cases, if we're talking about adjectifs relationnels, then they should come right after your noun. Une visite présidentielle des députés européens, un ordinateur portable. And then we were talking about as well les adjectifs suivis d'un complément. So let's see one example now. Un conseil bon à suivre. So it's actually quite interesting because in that case you can see that you've got your noun, un conseil, then you've got your adjective, bon, but then it introduces, or it introduces, sorry, <laughs> un complément, and this complément is à suivre. Okay, so in that case you've got your adjective and the rest, so uh, le complément, 
So, of course, you should put them after your noun. Okay? Un conseil bon à suivre. Une voiture facile à conduire. Une fillette pleine de vie. Des exercices difficiles à faire. Okay, so in all these cases, you can see that the adjectives are introducing something more. Okay, so, well, you get a preposition and after that you get, well, a verb here and then a substantive here and a verb here as well. Okay, but then in all these cases, keep in mind that they should come definitely before the noun. Uh, sorry, after the nouns. <laughs> okay, so translation. Un conseil bon à suivre. Une voiture facile à conduire. Une fillette pleine de vie. Des exercices difficiles à faire. So remember that we've been seeing all the adjectives that uh, belong to this group, epithet postposé. So we were talking about les adjectifs qui expriment une qualité objective. Then les participes passés et une partie des participes présents utilisés comme adjectifs. Les adjectifs qui sont précédés d'un adverbe, but we're not talking about trop, très, tout or si. Les adjectifs relationnels, and the last one was les adjectifs qui sont suivis d'un complément. So in all these cases, the adjectives are epithet postposé, so they will come after your noun. Okay? L'adjectif employé en fonction de nom. And we can start right now. So it's quite interesting because we've been seeing in the previous video um, well the situation when you can use uh, an adjective as an adverb and basically it's quite interesting because in this video we, we will discover that it's possible as well to make uh, some nouns uh, based on the adjectives okay so it's actually quite simple you will just take your adjective okay and then if it's possible because it's not possible in all the situations we will see that but then if it's possible you will get well whether une forme masculine or then une forme féminine or in some situations you will get both okay so basically you just put the masculine form of your adjective and you put an article before that un or then la forme féminine and you put an article before that une Okay, or it could be le and la, and you will get your noun. Okay, so it's quite simple. So let's see now. For instance, if we take uh, the example of belle, okay, so it's the adjective, beautiful, and it's the feminine form, all right, and then it's possible to use this as a noun, une belle, okay, une belle, so it means a beautiful lady, une belle. Okay, or then we can take, for instance, this adjective sportif, and in that case here you've got the masculine sportif, and you've got the feminine sportive, alright, and well, you will make un sportif, and then une sportive, so two nouns actually constructed based on the adjectives, alright, for the translation, here it is, belle, une belle, Sportif, sportive, so l'adjectif, and then un sportif, une sportive. Jeune, so you can see here that we've got the masculine form and the feminine form. They are the same, but I wanted to put them both anyway. So you will get un jeune, and you will get une jeune. Okay, so you don't change it, you just put the article, un et une. Same thing here, vieux and then vieille, un vieux and then une vieille, okay? Well, clearly it's not really polite, but you can hear it, so it's used, all right? So, jeune and then vieux and vieille, okay? So let's hear now, or let's look at uh, other um, adjectives uh, that will make nouns so this one is quite interesting because rouge 
So we're talking about the colors, okay? So rouge, so it could be green, it could be any anything else, but then rouge, and in that case, well, of course, you get only one possibility because you don't have the masculine and the feminine, so it will be masculine, un rouge, okay? Then bon, so in that case, you can use the masculine and the feminine. You're talking about the persons, person who is uh, talented, who is good in something, un bon, une bonne, okay, it can be something uh, something else than a person as well. Mauvais, un mauvais, une mauvaise, so same thing, it can be for a person or for a thing. Mou, un mou, une molle. Gentil, un gentil, une gentille. Méchant, un méchant, une méchante. Okay, so you can see that in all these cases here, you've got the masculine and the feminine, but keep in mind that in some cases, like for the colors here, rouge, it will be only, you know, whether masculine or feminine, in this case, it's masculine. Okay, let's see now the translation. Rouge, bon, mauvais, mou, gentil, méchant. Les adjectifs qui ont trois formes. Okay, so we can start right now. And as you probably know, normally when we talk about adjectives in French, we talk about one form for the masculine and one form for the feminine. At least we're talking about the singular here. Okay, so one form for the masculine and one form for the feminine. In some cases they can be the same, but still we've got one form for each. Uh, gender, okay? But we've got, of course, as usual in French, some exceptions, and some adjectives have two forms for the masculine and one form for the feminine, okay? So we're talking about these two forms for the masculine because it can be quite tricky, okay? So let's see, and the question is why, of course, we are talking in this case of what we call adjective Anteposé. So, les adjectifs anteposés are les adjectifs placés devant un nom. So, the adjectives that will come before the noun. Okay? And the good thing is that we're talking only about five adjectives. For all the French language, we've got only five adjectives that will be irregular. So, it's not that much. Okay? So, let's see them. The first one is beau. And then after that, we've got fou, then mou, nouveau, and vieux. Okay, so these are the five adjectives that will be a bit strange because they will have two masculine forms. Okay, beau, fou, mou, nouveau, and then vieux. Okay, so let's see the first one. Beau. And so the second masculine form will be belle. Okay? And the feminine form, belle. So it's actually quite interesting because these two forms, so the second masculine form and the feminine form, are phonetically the same. It's belle. Okay? So belle, belle. And then beau for the masculine, the first one. And here's the meaning. The second one is, <coughs> sorry, fou. And here is the second masculine form, and it's folle. And the feminine form is folle. Okay, same thing here, same pronunciation, but then you write them differently. So masculine, first one, fou, and then the second form, folle. Okay, here is the meaning. Mou, molle for the second masculine form and then feminine form, molle. Here is the meaning. And then nouveau will give us nouvelle for the second masculine form and then nouvelle for the feminine form. And here is the meaning. 
and last but not least vieux will give us vieille and then the feminine form vieille okay so phonetically the same but then look you write them differently okay and here is the meaning so the question is when do we modify or do we use this second masculine form well the first situation is of course so they they will be coming before the noun okay and then it will be according to the first letter of this noun so as these adjectives will be placed before the noun the noun that will come after will affect the fact that you will choose whether the first form of the masculine or the second form of the masculine okay and then we're talking now about the words that we will that will start with a vowel okay so if your word is starting with the vowel then no hesitation you will have to pick and to choose the second form of the masculine okay and then the second group is actually a bit more difficult because we're not talking about all the words starting with ash okay but only some of them okay but let's say that's a big part of them and in that case when you will have some words starting with ash then you will have to use uh, the second form of the masculine okay so let's start now and see how it will uh, work with beau for instance okay so if we take uh, an example like that a uh, beau paysage well actually you've got this adjective beau here just before and then you've got paysage here it does start with p okay so it does mean that you don't really need to modify it so you just put it like that but of course if you've got a word like um in that case so start with a, it starts with a ash okay and then well it belongs to the, this group that will require uh, to modify your adjective so you will have to use the second form for the masculine so bel okay un bel homme so un beau paysage and then un bel homme okay so let's see now for fou un projet fou so actually this one is quite interesting because you will put it after but in this case here you will put it before and as it comes before and then the word or the noun that it is related to is starting with a vowel a in that case you will have to use the second form of the masculine un fol avenir okay so un projet fou un fol avenir then mou un pain mou exactly the same situation you've got your mou coming here but when you put this form here and oreiller is starting with a vowel o here then you will have to modify it so un mol oreiller okay so un pain mou un mol oreiller nouveau un nouveau film okay so first letter is f so you don't change you just put nouveau here but then un nouvel appartement appartement start with a vowel a so nouvel the second form of the masculine un nouveau film un nouvel appartement vieux un vieux bateau and then un vieil homme un vieux bateau un vieil homme so remember these five adjectives les cinq adjectifs and beau belle fou fol mou molle nouveau nouvelle vieux and vieille l'adjectif comme adverbe 
Okay, so let's start right now. And it's actually quite interesting because normally we tend to think that, well, we will use adjectives like adjectives and only like adjecti adjectives, but in some cases, actually, it's possible to use these adjectives as adverbs. Okay, and so that's exactly what we will see in this video. So keep in mind that to construct this adverb based on this adjective, you will have to well take this adjective and then you take la forme masculine and it will give you this neutral form. Okay, so it means, and this is really important, that le féminin et le pluriel actually they won't exist as you will use this adjective as an adverb it does mean that you don't do anything you don't put anything at the end for the feminine or for the plural you just keep it like that okay so let's see a few examples now the first one les oiseaux volent au okay so you can see that here you get O, and it's an adjective, but as we connect it directly to the verb voler, okay, so it is an adverb, all right, so it's an adjective that has been changed, sorry, that has been changed into an adverb, okay, so les oiseaux volent O. La rose sent bon. Okay, so exactly the same thing here. You've got this bon, okay, it's an adjective, but you use it as an adverb. Even if la rose is feminine, you don't put anything at the end. You just keep it like that, bon. Okay, il chante faux. Exactly the same thing, faux, okay, is an adjective used as an adverb. And then, elle travaille dur. Okay, so, les oiseaux volent au. La rose sent bon, il chante faux, elle travaille dur. Ok, so remember, au, bon, faux, and dur are adjectives that are used as adverbs. So, remember, the way to construct or to make it is, you take your adjective, vous prenez l'adjectif, la forme masculine and then you will get this adverb so la forme neutre de l'adverbe and keep in mind that you will never put the feminine at the end or the plural